The years 2020 to 2024 have proven to be especially tumultuous in the context of the gaming industry. We have the Great Pestilence, sometimes referred to as COVID, which really ground a lot of the gaming industry to a halt in terms of development. We know, for example, that Baldur's Gate 3 took something like six years to develop, a far longer development cycle than Sven Vinka had ever wanted, and he recently reiterated that point because he wants Larian's next game's development cycle to be significantly shorter. But all in all, it was a very rough series of years. And one thing that flew under the radar of a lot of people was what was going on at CD Projekt Red, which infamously had a lot of weird crunch issues and also strangely enough had this habit of getting rid of entire things that people had spent years working on and then starting from afresh and this sort of thing. But on top of that, there was an investigation of one man called and I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, I don't speak Polish, please forgive me Polish speakers, Konrad Tomaskiewicz, who was charged with investigations of quote unquote bullying at CD Projekt Red and was found not to be guilty but he decided to leave anyway. Now, this guy is a pretty big deal. He was the lead director and executive producer of The Witcher 3, as well as Cyberpunk 2077, and has something like 17 years of experience. But after this investigation, where, as I said, he was found not to be guilty, he decided to part ways from CD Projekt Red and decided to go his own way and founded his own studio called Rebel Wolves. Now, the interesting thing is a number of people from CD Projekt Red joined him in founding this, although he is the CEO and the leader of the team, but they went along with him, which implies to me that a lot of these allegations simply were not true. Indeed, he was found not to be guilty. On top of that, his own brother, Mateusz Tomaskiewicz, joined him later. Sorry for my pronunciation, Polish people. Very sorry. He was also a very experienced person in the game industry. He worked as the lead quest designer in The Witcher 3, as well as the quest director during the development of Cyberpunk 2077, as well as Phantom Liberty. So, big credentials right there. Why am I talking about this new studio, Rebel Wolves? Well, I'm talking about it because I think it's a big deal, potentially, and there's not much to go on. But basically what Konrad Tomaskiewicz has started is his own project, namely a game and we only know the name, the tentative name, called Don Walker, the first in a saga, presumably a trilogy, because usually that's what's implied when it comes to these types of games. And this is going to be a triple A game as well. And we don't have a whole lot to go on at this stage, but here's what the studio Rebel Wolf says on their homepage about the game they're working on. We're currently working on our own triple A IP, dark fantasy RPG, the first title of a planned saga. And though we're dying to tell you more, that's all we can share at this point. Frustrating, we know. But let's talk about what we want the game to be, how we're approaching making it, and what we're striving to achieve. We consider games to be a form of art, and real art has ambition. That we have in spades. We want to tell stories which will shake you to the core, draw you in, make you second guess your instincts. We want to create a truly immersive narrative an experience you will remember and continue to recall long after the credits roll. We believe games must be fun. We aim to create meaty, dynamic gameplay systems, which will bring a breath of fresh air to RPG games. You will immediately understand how they work, and then spend hours playing to create the best build. And finally, we think games should make the most of interactivity after you have as much freedom as possible. Our goal is to give you plenty of ways to solve a problem and then let you have a go at it. There will be no right or wrong way to play the game. It'll be up to you to decide what is your way. So as you can see, very sparse details, not a whole lot to go on, but I do like the design philosophy. But of course, this stuff is not nearly as interesting as the stuff we could speculate on. Now this is actually a AAA game, which might surprise you, because basically they were able to secure funding from a company called NetEase, they're based in China, they specialize in mobile games, but now they have the funds to create a AAA RPG. Now again, there's very little to go on when it comes to this, but we're talking about people who are directing this, who are deeply involved, particularly in The Witcher 3, and they are really into the fantasy medieval genre. And their credentials, the fact that his brother, for example, was a quest designer, and we all know how amazing the quests were for Witcher 3 in particular, is very, very promising. Now, they haven't been at it too long. The studio's barely existed for two years. 
And so I'd say they've only been working on this game for maybe maximum a year and a half, maybe a little over that. So this game is a long way off. I'm not going to hype it because I know nothing about it, but I think the studio should be brought to people's attention. I think this game could potentially be very good. And there's another thing I want to talk about, which is pure speculation based on the images the art revealed. And we only have two pieces of art so far, but I think it says a lot. When you look at this art here, what do you see? in conjunction with the name Don Walker. Well, forgive me for stating the obvious, but the word or the image that comes to mind here is vampire, vampire, Don Walker. Now, let me tell you why I think this is potentially just such a cool idea. A dark medieval fantasy saga with a focus on vampires, not just fighting them potentially, but maybe you are a vampire. After all, think about the term Don Walker. If you've ever watched the Blade films, you know that Blade himself, who is a vampire-human hybrid, is called the Daywalker, because uniquely he can withstand the sun's rays. He's not destroyed by the sun like other vampires. And imagine, for example, a protagonist that is some kind of hybrid. Sometimes these are referred to as Dampiers in fantasy settings. There was an ancient anime back in the 80s called Vampire Hunter D. He was a Dampier. And so... Imagine a Dampier-like figure who can withstand the sun, but has many vampire-esque abilities on top of that. It's hard to miss the signs in this art. You have the one creature that kind of looks like a vampire, and then you have the other art with a lot of bats. This has to be referring to vampire. Now, the idea that it doesn't just refer to fighting vampires is contained in the name Don Walker. Why would they have a name Don Walker? It heavily implies something beyond just a guy, some sort of warrior fighting vampires. Now at this stage, unfortunately, there's very little left to go on. And of course, this is where we could potentially let speculation run wild. Think about the amount of possibilities on offer if indeed you play some sort of Dampier protagonist. Because then you could think about how this protagonist might interact with fully fledged vampires, as well as normal mortals or humans or however you want to term them, and that particular setting's view of such an individual. Maybe it's a thing that happens every now and then, where they possess a certain type of status in a fashion akin to The Witcher. Not saying it's going to be anything like The Witcher, obviously, but the idea that this Dampier character potentially might have a unique status that people are interested in, and that this individual is viewed differently from a standard human or demi-human, and essentially has a different place in the society of that civilization, and potentially a different role. Rebel Wolves, they're based in Warsaw, Poland, not too far away actually from CD Projekt Red apparently, and they're still recruiting, they're building up their studio assets, but try to think of the last proper vampire-based RPG that was a really good game. There aren't many, I can't think of really too many at all. There was that one game, Vampire, which was okay, but it wasn't a triple-A game. It wasn't really an RPG, I would argue. It was something else. But the last proper vampire-based RPG that had those grim undertones, albeit with a bunch of humor, I have to say, was Vampire Bloodlines 2 The Masquerade. And that was 20 years ago. Now, yes, we are aware that they're working on the next Bloodlines title, but if you've seen any of the footage, and I've talked about it, it looks very, very unpromising. It looks like they're going to just crap something out and just hope that it does decently enough. It does not look good at all, and it doesn't look like a proper RPG. So the idea of an epic trilogy revolving around some kind of Dampier-esque vampire-like figure that fights other vampires, or indeed other monsters and creatures of the night, sounds very, very enticing and promising, because I absolutely love vampires. One of my favorite runs on Skyrim is to play a vampire, be a vampire, of course with additional mods. So yeah, this could be a big deal. I could be completely wrong, obviously, we have no other information to go on, but looking at these people's credentials, their intentions, and this idea of a Don Walker, a vampire-esque figure, I don't know. I find it hard to pass up. Anyway, a lot of this is pure speculation. We don't know anything about this game because they don't have any details to release. But let me know what you think about this idea of a dark saga revolving around vampires, or you play a kind of vampire-esque or Dampier protagonist character. Sounds awesome to me. Sounds amazing. Do let me know. And as always, thank you for tuning in. If you like my content, you can leave a like, share, comment, subscribe. Be much appreciated. That's what helps out the channel, makes it grow. Until then, take care.